Okay, back in the track. Here's the intro for Bible Bus 144 to the Bible, another Bible study. Like I said, I'm doing the five year journey here. So, you are my healer. And I haven't uploaded the message of this past Sunday yet. But check out my church, Zoe Sensor. But the study today is with, you know what time is it? Through the Bible with the late teacher, Dr. McGee, Book of Galatians, Chapter 5. Turn your Bibles there. And I'll see you in a bit. I just have to make it. This is the main channel right there. Alright, God bless. from the Doris Duke Foundation. Well, I believe has the authority. Well, actually, the Army Corps of Engineers, you know, go in and clean out the damn river. Um, but, you know. Foundation.org. It's 546. Moments that don't just make us dream for a better future. They inspire us to make one. A moment. It's your last chance to swing by your local grocery outlet and participate in our annual food and drink specials you're sure to love. From Margarita Mondays and Why Not Wednesdays to Flocking Fridays and... More, more than double. Can't you just? Oh, you regret, you but you've got buyer's regret already. Org and look for God's answer to fear, anxiety, and worry, part one. Or subscribe to our podcast at Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. Well, it's our joy to have Shannon Bream in the studio with us today. She's here along with Pastor Greg and his wife, Kathy. Uh, she's anchor of Fox News Sunday. I'm sure you're well aware of the name and the face on your television set. Uh, she's written a brand new book called The Love Stories of the Bible Speak. And uh, in it, Shannon, you write about uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, tell us about their love story. Uh, obviously, neither one dated very many other people. <laughs> How does that love story compare to what we all know today as a love story? This is like the ultimate arranged marriage, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I think it's such a beautiful thing. You see all through creation is um, God is presenting the animals before Adam, and he gets to name all of them. He keeps saying, it is good. I created day and night. It is good. All of the mm -hmm. things that happen, but it was 
it wasn't until you have Adam in there that he noticed something wasn't good, that mm-hmm. there was no match for Adam. There was no one. Mm-hmm. So he actually works um, from Adam's body to create this helper. But when you really dig into the Hebrew there, it's it's not what some people, if they are um, skeptical of the story, would think that you know Eve was subordinate or she was lesser to him. It's not that. She was really a partner in life with him. Right. And so I think there's a beautiful model there for how we are to approach marriage. Um, they made some wrong decisions like we all do, but really this was a partnership of equals that have different mm-hmm. roles, but God never esteemed one of them over the other. They were in mm-hmm. this together. That's so fascinating. I think it's amazing to think that when Adam first sees Eve, he said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of mm-hmm. my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. He didn't even, he couldn't even define who he was or what he was until he saw her. Mm-hmm. And she, she is woman she has been taken out of man and now he knows who he is and his role and he sees her in all of her splendor and beauty that would have been quite quite the moment he says right. at last right <laughs> at she's last. here she's, she's arrived here. this person i didn't know was missing this thing yeah. from my life that i didn't realize was going to be so crucial to me tending to creation and moving the entire story of humanity forward mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the things that Chen writes about in a brand new book that we're offering to you this month for your gift of any size. And the title of Shannon Bream's new book is The Love Stories of the Bible Speak, subtitled Biblical Lessons of Romance, Friendship, and Faith. And we're offering it to you this month for your gift of any size. Yeah, that's right. It's always our desire to undergird your Christian growth by putting significant resources into your hands. And this is a wonderful new book you'll want to have. We'll send it to say thank you for your investment in keeping these studies coming your way. So as you donate today, be sure to ask for The Love Stories of the Bible Speak. And we'll only be mentioning this resource a short time longer, so get in touch for your copy as soon as you can. You can reach us by phone anytime at 1-800-821-3300. That's 1-800-821-3300. Or write A New Beginning, Box 4000, Riverside, California, 92514. Or go online to harvest.org. Well, Pastor Greg, you wrapped up your message today by talking about eternity. Yeah. How can someone listening know that they're going to heaven? Well, that's a great question. And I guess, let me take it a step further. I know that is the most important question you can ask. How can a person know they're going to heaven? Let me say at the outset, I believe I'm going to heaven. In fact, I'll take it a step further. I know I'm going to heaven. You say, Greg, isn't that kind of arrogant? Not really. Because I know this because God has made a promise to me, and I've believed that promise. The Bible says, we write these things to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. I've believed on the name of the Son of God. Thus I know I'll go to heaven when I die. Here's my question to you. Do you believe on the name of the Son of God? Is there any more important issue than that? I can't think of one. So I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer. And this is a prayer where you will be asking Jesus to forgive you of your sin, and you'll be asking him to be your own Savior, friend, Lord. It's a prayer only you can pray. Pray these words if you would. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner, but I know that you are the Savior who died on the cross for my sin and rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my life. I want to believe in you. I want to follow you. I want this relationship with you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin and rising again from the dead. And I thank you that you've heard this prayer. And I believe you've come into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to help you grow in your faith. I want to help you grow spiritually. So I have a free gift for you. It's called the New Believers Growth Packet. What's in it? No, not a bag of seeds to plant in your backyard. I guess it's sort of a form of a bag of seeds because 
I want to sow some spiritual seed in your life to help you develop as a follower of Christ. So I'm going to send you a copy of the New Testament in the New Living Translation, but it's a special edition. It's called the New Believer's Bible, and it's filled with notes that I wrote that will encourage you in this new commitment or recommitment you've made to Christ. And there's some other materials in the New Believer's Packet as well. So order your copy today. And I'm so glad I had this privilege today to lead you in that prayer. God bless you. You've made the right decision, the decision to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. And here's how to get that new believer's packet. You can call us at 1-800-821-3300. That's a 24-7 phone number, 1-800-821-3300. Or drop us a note at a new beginning, Box 4000, Riverside, California, 92514. Or go online to harvest.org and click the words, Know God. Well, next time, Pastor Greg has more in-depth insights on how the Lord enables us to live a life free from fear, anxiety, and worry. Join us here on A New Beginning with pastor and Bible teacher, Greg Laurie. A New Beginning is sponsored by Harvest Christian Fellowship and is pre-recorded. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush on this wonderful Wednesday. Oh, yes. May we keep our eyes on Jesus today and every day. Amen. Going to Him first with our cares and our concerns, not as a last resort. Come to Him with praise and thanksgiving, too, for who He is. Amen. I love this encouraging verse in Isaiah 40. 31. It's just a real picture of what it looks like when we really just rely on the Lord and, and we wait patiently for him. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. Weary. <laughs> they will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Such a beautiful picture of waiting on the Lord. Well, hey, have you uh, ever gone to the Holy Land? Well, it could be a life-changing tour for you with Pastor Greg Laurie this spring. Imagine worshiping, praying, and opening God's Word where the events took place. Find out more about that by going to israel.harvest.org. Well, Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee is next. Glad you're here. Bring the hope with you wherever you go. Download the free KKLA app on Google Play or the App Store. The following is not an actor, but a real-life story from Trinity Debt Management. I'm Corey, and this is my story. I was going through some financial troubles paying off my credit cards. I was paying high interest rates, and it just wasn't getting any better. And I knew I had to do something. So my mom told me about Trinity, and so I decided to call. Trinity was able to do something that I couldn't. I'm paying off my my debt. I'm saving thousands and things are really looking up. I promise you guys, you will not regret it when you call Trinity because it was such a relief and less stress in my life. And it was the best thing I could have done for myself because once I called Trinity, they took care of me and I felt such a relief, a weight off my shoulders. And they are a Christian based company. I love it. (laughs) If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-606-4260. I'm Corey, and I'm debt-free for keeps. 1-800-606-4260. Listen on Odyssey. KKLA FM Los Angeles. Find hope here. Good Wednesday morning to you. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush. Just before 6 a.m., let's check in with Dr. J. Vernon McGee as we listen to this pre-recorded program sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network. Dr. McGee's in Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. should desire to please God, not because he must please him like a slave, but because he is a son and he wants to please his father. That's some of the wisdom that Dr. J. Vernon McGee shares as we continue our discussion about liberty versus the law on Through the Bible. I'm Steve Schwetz, welcoming you to another great adventure in God's Word. So as you open to Galatians 5, Greg and I have got a great update on what's happening with God's Word in India. 
Yeah, Steve, India, even though you and I have been there a couple times, yep. uh, it, it's, a, it's just a very vast and complex and kind of a mysterious uh, country. All the different cultures, there's over 1,600 different languages spoken. Yeah, yeah. 1,600. Yeah. Don't miss that. I mean, 1,600. Yeah. Yes. And they have, it's different than the United States, but they have, I think it's about 28 unique states and that each of them have their own kind of governmental structure they have their own culture so it is a it is a tremendous uh place to try to bring the word of god and of course by god's grace we're we're bringing through the Bible and Dr. McGee's teaching in over 150 languages. Yeah, and we're rolling out the app in all sorts of different yeah. languages there. We've got so much that we would talk about when we focus on our yes. digital in yeah. India, but we're also on two major networks there, yep. and we get a really good response. And the interesting thing is um, the response for us, usually I probably skews more female overall, yeah. I would think, and yet here in Coke Baroque in India, three quarters of the people are male. They're yeah. from rural areas and they're between the ages 30 of 31 and 45. So it's really kind of an interesting skew on the, on the demographics yes. there. It, it shows that God is doing something uh, very uh, unusual in this place. And also it, it'd be good for our listening family to know uh, there, there are only about a million Coke Baroque speakers and that's the ministry that we're talking about. And, yeah. and you say, but there's, you know, 1.4 billion people. People right. Why don't India. you just do English and Hindi, yeah, Greg, and exactly. then be done with it? Why do you do these well, little Steve, languages? I'm glad you asked that question. I have a friend. His name is Steve something, something or other, yeah. and he loves to talk about how when you talk to somebody about spiritual matters, they want to talk about the language of their heart or their mother tongue. And so that's why we go to the trouble and the expense and the administrative challenges that go along with getting Dr. McGee's teaching into these smaller languages. But hey, how would you like to try to minister to a million people? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. that's a pretty good size congregation. Exactly. And we're getting such good fruit as yes. evidenced by the testimonies that we've got. Let's get to them. Yes. First one is James who writes to us. Although I'm a Christian, I did not have much knowledge about the word of God. I did not truly understand the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the reason that I was having no peace, hope, or joy in my life. I was living a worldly life and I had no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't have a good Bible teacher in our local church and even in our area. Although there are some pastors and evangelists looking after the churches here, they did not feed us thoroughly with biblical teaching. But by God's grace, I came to know about this program on TV. Since then, I never miss it. I listen to every message carefully and keep a record of whatever I have learned. The peace, joy, and hope is restored in my life. Wow. So, so exciting, Steve. I mean, and, and what was occurring to me as I heard you read that is we hear these letters from all over the world. This is, you know, God is doing yeah. something through the ministry, through the Bible. Yeah. The thing I like about this also is hearing this program on TV. On TV, and yeah. And that's a, another new ministry yes. that we're doing yep. that's unique, different from the Arabic TV and everything that we're right. doing in the Middle East. This is another way that we're reaching people and they're responding. Absolutely. Now, I think we have time to hear. I wish I would have <laughs> made you pronounce this. Lapian La Gruala. Okay. okay. Forgive me if I've massacred that name. This listener writes, this or viewer because they view the TV program. Yeah, yeah. This program helps me to learn God's word every day. As I have a mobile phone and I watch the programs on my phone, yes, I am growing more day by day in the knowledge of the word of God. I will continue to watch the programs in the days to come too. The word of God, which I learned from this program, has changed my life. Mm. I am very happy to watch this program and learn many things from the Bible. I watch it regularly. And again, this person's doing it on their smartphone. Yep. Just the the more you hear about people around the world, the more you realize we are we are all the, all same. the same. You look at the way yep. social media and how all the platforms have gone, not just to, to pictures. It's all about video. Yep. It's all about engagement in that way. And people are doing yep. the same thing there. Greg, pray for us as we begin our program. Father, our hearts are full of joy as we see what you're doing in a in a, a group of one million Coke Baroque speakers and how how your word is just changing people the way it does all over this planet. And we thank you for that. We ask you to continue to do it through our humble efforts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's our study in Galatians 5 on Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now, again, today, I want to make a recapitulation and tied in with what we have gone over before. And Paul began this section now that we're in, 
And we're no longer in justification by faith. We are now in the practical section, not doctrinal, but it's sanctification by the Spirit. And he tells us that we're to stand fast in a liberty wherewith we have been made free, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Now, what is it that Christ has set us free from? Well, there's several things Paul has already mentioned in this epistle. Back in chapter 1, verse 4, he says, "...who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father." And that's not according to law, but according to the will of God. He wants to deliver us from this present evil world. Now, he has set us free, therefore, that from this present evil world, we don't have to serve. It. And then we are set free from what we are by nature. And over in the second chapter, verse 20, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. That is, that took place 1,900 years ago. Nevertheless, I live. How do I live? Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. Now, you can see he says, I live, yet not I. You and I can't live the Christian life, but Christ can live it in us. And what a wonderful liberty we've been brought to today. And he's delivered us not only from what we are by nature, but he's delivered us from the curse of the law. And over in chapter 3, 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So that we've been delivered from any judgment of the law, the condemnation of it. And we've been delivered from the law itself. For in chapter 4, verse 4, he says, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now, all of these things we've been delivered from. And we've been delivered from a system that Israel had over a thousand years. And Peter, yonder in the council of Jerusalem in Acts 15, describing it, he says, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. We weren't able to do that. Now, Christ has delivered us from our offenses, and we've been raised in him. And we've been saved that in the ages to come, Paul says in Ephesians, that he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. Now, throughout eternity, we are to be a demonstration to God's created universe of the grace of God. And he will have done it all, or it's not grace, you see. Imagine, ouch, under in eternity, here's the church, and it has on it, all of these are a demonstration of the grace of God, except Vernon McGee, and he went to Sunday school and didn't miss 12, 15 Sundays. And that helps him in his salvation, or he paid his honest debts and something like that. What nonsense, friends. You're going to be there for the demonstration of his grace and nothing that you and I ever did will enter into it. And that is the offense of the cross that he's talked about here, that the offense of the cross would be cease. You see, actually here, the cross of Christ is an offense to all that man prides himself in. It's offensive to his morality because it tells him his works cannot justify him. It's offense to his philosophy, because its appeal is to faith and not to reason. It's an offense to the culture, because its truths are revealed to babes. It's an offense to his sense of caste, because God chooses the poor and humble. It's an offense to his will, because it calls for an unconditional surrender. It's an offense to his pride because it shows the exceeding sinfulness of the human heart. And it's an offense to himself because it tells me I must be born again. You know, that was, oh, that was almost insulting to that Pharisee Nicodemus that night to tell him as religious as he was, he must be born again. 
And that's the reason that a lot of ministers who are preaching the new birth today get in trouble with sometimes some members of the congregation. They don't want to be born again. They feel like they're good enough. It's an insult to you. The cross is an offense, but I don't think we ought to magnify that at all. Now he says here that we've been called under liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And as we said last time, this is what the gospel of grace does for the believer. What is it? Well, you can't do what you want to do. <laughs> it is grace, not law, that frees us from doing wrong and allows us to do right. Grace does not set us free to sin, but it sets us free from sin. You see that today the believer should desire to please God, not because he must please him like a slave, but because he's a son and he wills to please his father. He does what God wants, not because he fears to do otherwise like an enemy, but because he wants to do it for God's his friend. God is the one who loves him. And he serves God not because of any pressure from without like the law, but because of a great principle within even the life of Christ that's within us and that we love him. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I've often wondered, suppose one of the apostles said, we don't love you. I think he just said, forget the commandments then. The whole basis is a love relationship to him. The law, therefore, never could bring us to that place. It was negative to begin with. It was a negative goodness, and that's the kind of goodness a great many people have today. And, oh, if I could only get this through to a great many of the saints today, your negative goodness, friends, is a legal goodness. You can say, I don't do this, I don't do that, but for the name of heaven, what do you do? I know a lot of the saints, I've been pastor, they could get up and say, well, I don't go to a dance, and I don't go to the movies, and they could also say, I don't go to church on Sunday night, and I don't go to church in the midweek service. I know that because it didn't come. My friend, may I say to you that the law only gave a negative goodness, and it never rises to the sphere of positive goodness where one does things to please God for the very love of pleasing him. He wants us to serve him on that kind of basis. Now, that brings us to our subject today, and this is verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, this is Galatians 5, 16. We left off with this verse last time, and the word walk is peripateo. It means just walk up and down. The principle is walking in the Spirit. The word lust here has an evil connotation. It doesn't really have that in the Greek. Paul says there are a lot of desires of the flesh that are not evil in and of themselves, but they can take the place of that which is spiritual. Now, I know a great many Christians that get wrapped up in a hobby, and the hobby takes them away from the Word of God. And I know some Christians that spend a lot of time worshiping before that little idiot box that we call TV. Now, don't misunderstand. I look at TV, and I'm not under any law that you can't see TV. I think the news is very good, very biased, too, and you only get the liberal viewpoint in most places. And my feeling is that that is good. Some of the travelogues are quite fine, and every now and then a good old Western, you know. But may I say to you, you must understand that's a desire of the flesh, and if that's taking you away from spiritual things, then it's wrong. Now, will you listen to him? We're coming to verse 17. For the flesh, and I'm going to change this word lusteth here because it's a very strong word. For the flesh warreth against the spirit, and the spirit warreth against the flesh, and these are contrary and the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That is, the things that the old nature wanted to do. And this is very, friends, very important to see. In fact, I would say it's all important to see. 
at this particular point here. Now we have here the flesh warreth against the spirit, and the spirit warreth against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, a believer has a new nature. That's what our Lord meant when he said to Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the believer has that old nature of the flesh, and you don't get rid of it. The idea today, you can get rid of that old nature, tragic mistake. And I think that probably the greatest deception of the folk who think they've got rid of the old nature is that they haven't got rid of the old nature. And to be in that condition is a bad way. John says in his epistle, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That means if your truth's not in you, then there's no vacuum there. It must be a liar. And therefore, that puts that perfect individual in a pretty bad situation. The Word of God says he's a liar, and that is not very nice, but I didn't say it. Now will you notice what we have here, for this is a tremendous statement. You and I have two natures. That's what Paul is describing in the last part of Romans. It was his experience too, and I'm confident it's been the experience of many believers. The flesh warreth against the spirit, and the spirit warreth against the flesh, so that you cannot do the things that you would. This new nature, it rebels against the old nature. These are contrary. They're warring one against the other. Have you experienced that in your own life? Well, there is a song that we sing. It's come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Wonderful hymn. Well, it has in the last stanza, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Now, someone came along after this song was written, and they said, that's not my condition. I want to change that. And it's been changed. You'll find it, I understand in some hymn books, prone to worship, Lord, I feel it. Prone to love the God I serve. Now, which is true? I'd like to ask you right now, which is true? Is it prone to wander, Lord, I feel it? Prone to leave the God I love? Or is it prone to worship, Lord, I feel it? Prone to love the God I serve? Well, both are true. <laughs> Both are true. I've got a nature that's prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. And that old nature, I tell you, there are times it wants to wander. You know anything about that? Then I've got a new nature, too, and it's prone to worship. Lord, I feel it. There are times when I'm just sometimes riding along in the car. I just cry out. Him. If I'm alone, I just cried, oh, Lord, how wonderful you are, and I love you, <laughs> and I worship you. That's my new nature when that takes place. That old nature never gets around to that. And prone to love the God I serve. There are times when I can get far from him, and that's the old nature. Now, this is the condition of believers. Now, this idea today that I hear people say, well, I can't tell whether I'm walking in the Spirit or not. Yes, you can. Don't kid yourself about this, friends. Paul has spelled it out here so you can never miss it. He says, but if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. That is, the Holy Spirit of God brings you to a higher plane. Why? Because here's what the flesh does now. The old nature does these things. And the law was given to curb the old nature. Will you notice this? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And, oh, it's a bad list here. I'll give it to you as I have worked it out. There are those that are known as sensual sins. The first one, adulterous, probably not in the better manuscripts, but you get to it down here in another word or two. Fornication means prostitution. 
uncleanness. And that is sexual, of course. These are sensual sins, pornography, all of that, lasciviousness. That means brutal, sadistic. And there's a great deal of that abounding today, sensual sins. This is what the flesh does. Then there are religious sins. All oh, the flesh is religious. Idolatry, that's worship idols. And there are a great many folk can worship other things than just an idol. It can be, well, let me come back. That little old idiot box has sure become an idol for a lot of folk today. A lot of people worship money. These are things. And witchcraft, the Greek word is pharmakeia. And pharmakeia, we get our word pharmacy from that. Well, we call them drug stores back where I came from. Drug stores. The word is drugs. And that's used in religion. It was used in all the heathen religions. And these are religious sins. And there are great many using them today. Then there are social sins. Hatred. That's enmity. Variance. That's strife. And the word is actually Eris, the goddess of strife. Emulations means rivalry, jealousy. And wrath is thumoi. That's heat, wrath, oh, hot temper. And strife means factions and little cliques. Do you have little cliques in your church today or in your Christian circles? May I say that's probably hurting the church today, the organized church, as much as anything. Then seditions, that means divisions again. This group divides up and becomes two groups. Why? Because they can't get along. Heresies means parties and sects. That's the different groups. Envyings, and we understand that. And I think murders is probably not in the best manuscripts because I think of the fact that it's included in all of this. Hatred leads to murder. And the Lord Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, if you hate your brother, you're guilty of murder. And you see the words here, get all of us. Drunkenness, these are personal sins. And revelings, these are personal sins. And you can see how this is divided. Now, this ugly brood is what the flesh does. And he doesn't mention all of them. And he says, such like. And that means that there are a lot of others that he could have mentioned, but didn't. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do, and the word is practice, it's continuous action, that live in these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I can give the illustration our Lord gave. The prodigal son got down in the pig pen, but he didn't stay in the pig pen. The only ones that stay in pig pens are pigs. If a son gets down there, he's going to be very unhappy. And if you can live in sin, you're in a dangerous position, my friend. It just simply means you're probably not a child of God because no child of God can be satisfied in sin at all. And you'll have to come out of it. Oh, I have letter here after letter. I've shared several of them with you just the other day, this lady. And I think she's a real born-again person. Almost got caught as a widow meeting a married man. And they found out that they had a love for each other. I don't question that. But I told her to jump out of that situation like jumping out of a burning building. That sort of thing can drag you down to hell, my friend, to live in a thing like that. And there's too much of that today. And my friend, believers can't get by with it. If you get by with it, you're not his children. He only paddles his own children. All right, we're going to leave off there. Not moving very fast here, but this is important, friends. Oh, how important this section is. Until next time, may God richly bless you. My beloved. So that you don't really understand. You, you pretend that you know, but you don't know. I and you got to believe people with you, who sir. ask I you really questions. Have questions. Tucker, you gotta stop interrupting me. This is a little nutty. I'm open minded. You are not. How can you not love Tucker Carlson? They didn't want to answer that question. Oh, shut up. Recently, the 
fired Fox host, appeared at the Family Leadership Summit in the very friendly state of Iowa. What do you folks do around here for excitement? Mind our business? In between tearing in to various sundry politicians. Your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. Right. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Tucker, surprisingly, took a moment to wax philosophical. And I have to warn you, if you have been putting your hope in a politician to keep the culture from swirling right down the tubes, you might not like this. Leaving aside even elections, I think it's clearly a pivot point in history. And I don't think the issues that we debate and really are in some ways distractions are the core issues mm. at all. B I N G O. The moral rotten degradation of this country, it cannot be remedied with a political solution. Remember, politics flows downstream from religion. There are forces, unseen forces, acting on people. Well, if there are unseen forces at work, and there are, there's only one solution. I'm grateful. Tucker pointed us toward a Bible solution in the Bible, but the Bible has been screaming the solution all along. What ails the country is an increasing number of unregenerate people with increasingly darkened and downright perverted minds. I feel like it's really important to approach politics with that in mind. Like, a lot of these issues are symbols of this much larger battle. Thank you for that, Tucker. But Jesus told us a long time ago the solution to our societal ills is salvation. Let me challenge you with a thought experiment. Imagine every single time a conservative talking head got whipped into a total frenzy and got you super agitated and said, We can't take this anymore, Christians! need to rise up and do something. Instead of just being agitated by the most recent perverse national folly, what if every Christian actually walked outside the door, found a pagan, and witnessed to him or her? Just two genders. Do you think that that could possibly make a difference? And even if it didn't, that is our mandate. Christians aren't here to get agitated. We're here as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Is it time for Christians to stand up and do something? Yeah, with a gospel tract in their hand. It's what we should have been doing all along. We are to go and make disciples, not Republicans. That kind of tends to take care of itself anyway. So don't take it from me. Don't take it from Tucker Carlson. Please take it from Jesus. Discuss. Good evening, my fellow totally depraved Americans. There is nothing on this earth more precious to us than our families and the health of our loved ones. MediShare is affordable biblical health sharing, a health insurance alternative Christian sharing the health care burdens of other Christians. The average family saving $500 per month, customer satisfaction rates through the roof, teledocs. Please learn more about MediShare for the sake of your family at MediShare.com slash wretched or call 844-34-BIBLE. that by visiting the resources section of ttb.org and downloading your free copy of Dr. McGee's booklet, Living the Christian Life God's Way. It's really a good resource. Or you can call us at 1-800-65-BIBLE if we can help you find it. How do Christians know when they're walking in the Spirit? I'll find out next time as we make our way through the New Testament book of Galatians. I'm Steve Schwetz and I'll meet you here. God bless you as you walk with Him today in His Word. Jesus came home, all to him I owe. Sin that left the crimson stain, be washed in white as snow. 
journey on the Bible bus today is supported by the prayers and gifts of fellow passengers as we travel through the Bible. Through the Bible was sponsored by Through the Bible Radio Network and was pre-recorded. I'm Donna Rush with SoCal's Morning Rush. Isn't it good we serve a God of second chances? Woo! Haven't we all made so many mistakes in life? And still, God's Word says in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He has paid the price for my sins and your sins. And when you admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, you repent and you ask for forgiveness and you ask Jesus to come into your life as your Savior and your Lord. He will. And then you can begin to let His Holy Spirit transform your life from the inside out. Yes. See, we don't have to be all cleaned up before coming to Him and all right. No, we got to come to Him. He will walk you through whatever you're going through. Because, you know, we were never made to walk through this life alone. Amen. Hey, we've got uh, warm temperatures continuing today. 90 degrees in L.A. and O.C. metro areas for highs today. And really through Saturday, it's going to remain that way. In L.A. and O.C. metro areas, low triple digits through Saturday. And the beaches are nice. We'll have mid to upper 70s for highs there. This weather check is sponsored by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. SoCal's Morning Rush on 99.5 KKLA. You guys just brought smiles to not only me, but to a lot of people. And I hope you guys continue your work. And I'll definitely always support you guys. 99.5 KKLA. Find hope here. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has been at the forefront of inflammatory bowel disease research and care for over 50 years. Learn more about research, education, and support at Foundation.org. The second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history just happened. Essentially, the bank took over $200 billion of customer deposits and invested them in government bonds. However, the value of these bonds has decreased since they were acquired due to rising interest rates. As a result, if customers were to withdraw their money, the bank would be unable to sell the bonds quickly enough to cover the withdrawals. This situation has led to panic among customers and the government has had to step in. Americans are feeling vulnerable and concerned about the safety of their money. It is time to start exploring alternative investment options. One option that offers stability and control over your money is investing in physical gold. Protecting your money with physical gold provides a reliable alternative to traditional banking. Call the Gold Financial Group. Get a free copy of the Retirement Protection Guide. 800 2 Two one four ninety twenty three eight hundred two one four ninety twenty three. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? Term Busters, a Christian-owned company, can help. There's a tremendous price war in the term life industry. Rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, a man age 45, non-smoker, $1 million of coverage, $75 per month level rate for 10 years. Or a man age 50, non-smoker, can obtain $500,000 of coverage for a monthly premium of $110. Level rate for 20 years. That's right. Guaranteed level rate for 20 years. If you're a smoker, we have great rates for you as well. At Term Busters, we specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. If you're looking for new or replacement term life insurance, call today for a quote at 800-558-9940. You're probably paying more than you should. Call 800-558-9940. Remember, 800-558-9940. Sample rate quotes based on preferred non-smoker underwriting. Exam required to qualify. That number for term busters, Christian owned and operated, is 800-558-9940. The roof was completely gone. All of our memories being wiped away. The rain is what got 20 minutes of sheer terror. And you can feel it in your body. I watched the fire move down the canyon. The rumbling of the house. My son started screaming, we're going to die, we're going to die. In the name of Jesus, we are not going to die. At Samaritan's Purse, we bring spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. We go into dangerous situations because in disaster, in disease, in war, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, restore the broken. All who work and volunteer with Samaritan's Purse follow the example of Jesus. We go to serve, not to be served. And we go in Jesus' name. Join us at SamaritansPurse.org. That's SamaritansPurse.org. Listen on Odyssey. It's summertime. All summer long, you'll find hope here. My summer station. KKLA-FM, Los Angeles. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. 
we're all going to get to heaven, and then God's going to go, oh. like, is Cece here yet? Is she here yet? <laughs> her voice, Skipper. In- incredible. <laughs> Positive, encouraging K-Love, Skip and Amy, asking you to share with us, um, what do we call this again? A comfort show. Oh, that's it. I'm sorry. Sometimes you just need to decompress a little bit or feel better. It's a show that you always turn on just to get a little comfort. So what's yours? My comfort show is New Girl. So my comfort show right now is Cobra Kai. Um, I tell people all the time, I eat, sleep, and drink Cobra Kai. I watch Cobra Kai every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Cobra Kai, baby, rocks. You know, after collecting all your answers uh, today and yesterday, I think it's pretty much impossible to pick just one show that you could call the comfort show of all time. Although I would kind of lean into Andy Griffith myself. But then again, that's just me. Uh, So what is it for you? We would love to hear from you. It's the show that just brings you absolute comfort when you're totally stressed out. It's Skip and Amy in Charlotte this morning, the final scheduled stop on the Meet Every Listener Tour, Positive Encouraging K-Love. Skip and Amy, touring the country with the goal to meet every listener. The adventure continues with Positive Encouraging K-Love. Just ask the waves If they are still at the mention of his name They'll say my God is still the same Ask the walls If they still fall at the mighty sound of praise They'll say my God is still the same When did he break his promise? When did his kindness fail? Never has, never will My God is still the same When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? My God is still the same Ask the grave If it's strong enough to keep hope in its chains It'll say God is still the same They say you're only as good as your last success and failure's not an option. Maybe that's why I'm exhausted. Held so tight to their applause that when it stopped, I thought that yours were too. Till you said that my heart to you is worth everything. Gotta be somebody when I'm already somebody to you Got nothing to prove anymore So there's nothing to lose 
us anymore You're gonna keep on loving me for more than just the things that I do I'll sing it till there's no doubt Nobody can count me out Cause I'm already somebody to you There's the hands and feet of Jesus, right? Correct, yes. Could there be the hands, feet, and blankets of Jesus? Well, I mean, you could use your hand to hand over the blanket. Well, that's exactly what our good kid did. Oh. Her story's next. Positive, encouraging, Caleb. I remember when a long lost sinner met a good, good God. I remember when my heart was broken, but now it's not. I've tasted and I've seen you've been so good to me. From the moment that you changed my life. Never stopped. I'm gonna sing it. I'm gonna shout it. I'm gonna lift my hands and praise. No matter what is gonna come my way. All you do for me, I give you the glory. From the battle to the victory, I know what God is gonna fight for me. So when the devil come try to get me, gonna praise the Lord. When the devil Come try to get me gonna praise the Lord From the moment when the sun starts rising Till the sun goes down I'm surrounded by a million mercies I can feel them now I've tasted and I've seen You've been so good to me Got a melody inside my heart Oh, here's a sweet, sweet sound I'm gonna sing it I'm gonna shout it Devil 
when the devil come try to get me gonna praise the Lord. We are praising the Lord, hands in the air, the whole nine yards. Whoop, whoop. It's Mike and Tyler, positive, encouraging, kid love, Skip and Amy on the road to meet every listener to her in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Well, looks like we have a winner. The Good Kid of the Week. I love these stories about these kids who don't let anything get in the way of what they want to accomplish. This is beautiful. Your sweet daughter, Courtney, she needed a community service project, but COVID kind of got in the way and made it tough. So she just decided to think up one on her own. What is she doing? She takes and she gets blanket kits through donations that people have given her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She um, cuts and ties each blanket, then we wash it and dry it, and she hand writes a note of encouragement, and we give them to the homeless or those in shelters. Oh, my gracious. And how many blankets has she blessed people with? We're thinking it's close to around 400 so far. My goodness. But we're stockpiling right now because we know even though it's 90 degrees now, <laughs> Yes. In a couple months, it's not going to be. That's the truth. It's a constant need. I, I, I oh. love her heart. Yeah. She did not let this diversity, this shutdown, anything stop her from, from, from doing this. Over 400 blankets. And, and let me tell you, I know how that feeling of just warmth, literally and figuratively, what it does for someone in need. Yeah, and she came up with this idea when she was 15. So Incredible. Oh. Wow. Mama Becky, so impressed by sweet Courtney's heart and blessing people, pointing them to Jesus. And that's why we're naming her our good kid of the week. Oh, thank you so much. She just wants everybody to know that. And she'll like, she'll put a, a, a track in there or something, just an encouraging word that says things will get better. Yes. So, and that's what we just pray that God will just continue to use this ministry for his honor and his glory. Do you know a good kid that deserves to be recognized? Let us know. Go to klove.com, keyword, good kid. Buckle up and catch up on K-Love On Demand show, Moto Mission. Ride along with illusionist and stunt artist Brock Gill and his motorcycle-loving friends, Michael Tate, Dan Bremnis, Tyrion, and more as they travel the country to celebrate everyday people making an impact for the kingdom of God. We live in a world full of broken people, people who are hurting, people who are searching. But there's some people who are on a mission to change that. Moto Mission. Free to watch at klovondemand.com or the K-Love On Demand app for your phone or TV. K-Love, one minute of encouragement. Tim Tebow. As followers of Jesus, we want to spend our lives, energy, and focus on what's going to last forever. For me, that's three things. God, His Word, and people. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. I'm no theologian, but some of the things of heaven are going to be God, His Word, and people. By stepping back and getting a heavenly perspective, it helps realign how we should spend our time. Why waste today on things that won't ultimately matter tomorrow? Trust me, too many times I've done this. So with the time we have left, let's focus on making heaven crowded. You want to make a true difference? Make a difference that lasts forever. Find out more about Tim Tebow at klove.com. Keyword encouragement. We're at the home of NASCAR. The Meet Every Listener Tour with Skip and Amy is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Is the Del Taco. Any questions? Say hello to the best fast food taco in America. The no esté funcionando con eficiencia, pero el servicio gratis Fix Finder de Autoson te puede ayudar a encontrar la solución. Yeah. Sometimes the right the right the damn right. combo. His ego got in the way. <laughs> Just in, BMO is coming. Let's go live to the scene. I'm at what will soon be a BMO branch in a meaningful way by getting involved in our Give 5, Get 5 program. Donate 5... Three, my fam, it is Valentine in the morning. Taylor Swift, your chance today. I feel good about today. Stop reading into what I'm saying, though. I've already got some text. Go, what time is it going to happen? It's going to happen maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? But I know that Raph has had two winners already, already on his show. Uh, so I think we're kind of due, you know. Brian Burton back today. Don't know why. His family's still in Florida. 
Ryan, can you um, do you have anything to do with how many Taylor Swift songs we played back to back? I have nothing to do no, with anything. Nothing to do with that. Mm. But I can't believe you left your family in Florida. I'm so sorry. I didn't know you did that. You felt the pressure to come back to work. Well, it was kind of a long trip for me anyway, and right. it was scheduled kind of. Oddly or something, right? Less you went on a cruise. You guys did a like a Disney thing or something. What happened was my wife's sister was like planning this cruise, and my wife really wanted to go and get the yeah. cousins together. And so that's it came important. Together I get that. So yeah, like yeah. Late last minute, right? That I was like, I felt bad taking. It would have been like a week and a half. Oh so man, said, I'm sorry. Like, I left, and they're still there, and you know, right? And you're back here on your own. <laughs> So, and they get back this hey, weekend or something? This is fun, though. Yeah, I know, but it's your kids. I feel bad. You should have told me that, because family first is always something I think about. I know. They you get know? back uh, on Saturday. Right. I did hear from John Peake yesterday, you're not allowed to take any more vacation, <laughs> he said, because <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare without you. You're an integral part of the show, and I definitely missed you, even though it was like 48 hours. I just didn't have <laughs> you there. There was like so many people covering different jobs. And I was oh, just, nobody's doing nothing. Nobody knew what was going on around here yesterday, John. Yesterday, and I started to feel so bad for you, Valentine, because you were just like looking at Everyone that was like 32 and under. It was like you just babysitting six kids. That's what it was. <laughs> I, I was so babysitting bad. six kids and none of them knew what they were doing. <laughs> well, that's probably and John's right filling in for Jill, so he's got like two things on his plate. He didn't know what he was doing, coming or going. Pretty much. <laughs> it's a mess. Well, I'm sorry. It's You're also back. hard without Jill, you know? Oh, God, I know. My Jill. My rock. My rock isn't here. I feel like I'm one of those explorers back in the day that was going into the jungle or something. And then you turn around and all your people are gone. <laughs> and you're left. And then you just become Tarzan and they make movies about you. Okay. I should talk to somebody. <laughs> 649, it is 1043 my fan. This is Valentine in the morning. Laura kept me sane. Laura kept me sane. Well, Laura and I would leave and go down and get goldfish and just commiserate over a bowl of goldfish. God bless her. You know? And I don't know what she was saying because she speaks Australian at the time. <laughs> but we commiserated quite well. <laughs> Nancy Rodriguez has the morning traffic. Your chance at Taylor Swift is coming up. What's up, Nancy? Good morning, Val. So this report is sponsored by Albertsons and Bonds. 10 West at La Brea Avenue. It's a crash in the center lane. Expect delays from Vermont Avenue. Stop and go traffic through Orange. No accidents here. 55 South between Chapman and the 5. We've got some of that buildup. North Hills area. Here we are dealing with a wreck on that 405 South. Right before Roscoe Boulevard. Things are jam-packed from at least that 118. Save with digital coupons on Albertsons or Bonds.com. Buy fresh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts for just $1.97 per pound. Limit 10 pounds and Lucerne slice or shredded cheese. Six to eight ounces selected varieties are one ninety seven each. Limit six with digital coupon. I'm Nancy Rodriguez. That's your traffic on 104.3 My FM. From the Southern California Toy. Ok. Me. Bien. Taylor Cruz con su moneda de decora. Ahora sí. Si... <laughs> Brown bag morning. Brown bag morning. Join the convo. Call in and talk your shit. Yo, 818-520-1059. LA's number one for hip hop. Time for some power traffic sponsored by Albertsons and Vaughn. So if you're on the westbound 10 trying to get through mid-city as you get over to La Brea, you got a crash taking away that right-hand lane. So it's slowing you down, coming away from uh, just past the 110 and through North Hills, 405 southbound before Roscoe. You have a crash blocking lanes, backing things up to the 118. I'm Kelly J with your Power 106 traffic. Make your way to Vaughn's and Albertsons for a great digital deep finders, rocks, centras, ultimas y más. Metro Nissan Montclair. Punto.